The opinions expressed in this show are the views of the host and not necessarily that of WTRW, 94.3 The Talker, or the Bold Gold Media Group. The following presentation is brought to you by the host of the program who is solely responsible for its content. Good afternoon. Welcome to Make a Change. I'm your host, Terry Martin, along with my producer, Tom Jenkins. Good afternoon, Terry. How are you? Good. How are you, Tom? I am vertical and above the grass. Nothing else matters. You're, that's right. Well, this show is all about you and how to make a change. I really want to stress that I feel to make a change in our country, it must first start on a local level, in our hometowns, in our own families, and on an individual basis. Absolutely. And one person I know that is doing just that and has done it for at least 42 years plus, I'm sure, is Ed Borick, president of the Abington Lions Club. You know, I met Ed at a function called the Taste of the Abingtons, and you know, I knew by watching him as he was walking around the room, he was really someone special, and he was excited. I, I could tell, and he had knowledge about whatever he was there for. So when I had the opportunity to speak with him, I saw a little pin on his lapel, and I wore mine today. I don't know if you noticed it, Ed, but I asked him what that pin meant, and he went on to tell me about him being the president of the Abington Lions Club. He made it so interesting to me that, of course, by the end of our little talk, I ended up going to one of the meetings, and it has been exciting and fun. I just love being a part of the Lions, but I want to thank you, Ed, for coming on the show because I'm so happy as well as honored for you to be here. And now, Ed, I'm really excited to have you tell us all about you and how you got so involved with this wonderful organization. Thank you, Terry. First of all, I'm delighted for this wonderful opportunity to be a guest of of our host in this radio station, 94.3 FM, The Talker. By the way, I'm a listener. Our host who maintains her business in Clark Summit has unique qualities of being exuberant. Her kindness, caring attitude, and high spirit, always wanting to contribute not only to the well-beings of her client, but also contributing to the community needs for the less fortunate is definitely a tribute of her distinguished character. It's remarkable this program allows all listeners to learn the importance of kindness and the needs of service demonstrated by our host. I'm very appreciative to Terry Martin for allowing me to be a guest and have the opportunity and open discussion about being a member of the Lions of the Abingtons and Lions Club International headquartered in Oak Brook Park, Chicago, Illinois. Presently, I'm serving as president of the Abington Lions for the third consecutive year. Members of our board of directors, in a lighthearted way, continue to tell me I must serve till I don't make any errors. <laughs> of course, that is in their judgment only. However, they are the judge and the jury. It's my pleasure and a joy to be a member of the Abington Lions, joining together with community-minded men and women with the realization the needs of our community our state, our nation, and yes, throughout the world is prevalent. Okay, Ed, one of the things that I really love when you tell me the story, how you did not want to even be, uh, maybe not so much to be the Lions, but you, you just didn't really want to get involved. And, and then what happened? Uh, your, was it a spaghetti dinner that really changed your mind? I, I need you to just tell me that. <laughs> tell us. Well, that's a true statement, Terry. Uh, in my community, I had just a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to being a charter member of Lions Club International. A neighboring town saw the need for a Lions Club in my in my community, and an individual who was very, very involved in our community. He worked as a government official, seemed to know everybody. He was very active in his church. He came to me and explained that a new Lions Club would be be informed, and in a few months it would be chartered, and wanted for me to have the opportunity to be a charter member. 
as an ind- individual, I just looked up at to all the other uh, future members of the Lions Club, how elite they were in our community. Many of them were businessmen. Some of them worked for a local plant as supervisors and and the high level leaders, others were independent insurance men and uh, different types of walks of life, very, very successful and very uh, prominent in the, in the community. And my thought was that uh, I could not fit in with them to be a Lion member. And this individual, for four or five times, he would come to my residence and talk to me and talk to me. I truly earned an A in avoidance (laughs) because several times at different shopping centers, a grocery store, I actually hid between the aisles. Why did you think you, you, you couldn't measure up? Well, I just looked to all these other individuals as being more prominent and uh, successful in their walks of life, and I thought that I, I couldn't fit in, so I... And yet um, he's the president, yeah. <laughs> time after time. Mm-hmm. So I I decided to do my utmost in, in uh, staying away uh, from him, and then... Finally, uh, the club was chartered, and I I was fortunate where I did not become a charter member. Truly unfortunate. But uh, later on, um, he came to my residence with the uh, spaghetti tickets for a fundraiser they were having. And I wanted to be helpful to the new organization, so I purchased two tickets with the intent of not showing up. (laughs) (laughs) However, the day before the event, he came to my residence and told me that he would pick me up on Sunday to (laughs) attend. (laughs) He wasn't letting you get away. And I, I was, um, you know, backed up against a wall. I had no choice but attending. And he would tell me about a, 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 a. the local businessmen who were also good at the uh, cooking, who one was going to make the uh, Italian meatballs, one was going to make the Italian sauce, and uh, the truth of the matter is, I knew 99% of these individuals because uh, in a small community, you, you just got to know them. So finally, we went to the uh, spaghetti dinner, and it just became so relaxed, so calm atmosphere. At, at the dinner, uh, a few of my neighbors would come up and welcome me and thank me for coming. They were already members. And then later on, uh, a couple more. And uh, at the end, uh, uh, good friends of mine j- just invited me to the meeting for either one, two, three months and just to feel how things would go out. So reluctantly, I did uh, attend the meetings, and it was just incredible what the local Lion Clubs have to offer. At that time, they were getting ready for a Christmas show for the children. They were uh, helping a lady who lived in a uh, uh, trailer. She needed coal. Another lady lived in another trailer. She needed oil. And they were getting food baskets for a needy, taking a list of people who were in real need. And I saw the need there to help the less fortunate. And I did become a member of of the Lions Club, and perhaps it was a just a wonderful decision that I made, uh, maybe a little late from not being a charter member, but a member, but being a member, it was very, very uh, enjoyable uh, for the last 40 some years. Hey, who, Ed, who would have thought pasta would have been that important in your life? <laughs> you know, when you talk about charter member, what exactly does that mean? Because just that you would have been one of the founders for that area, yeah. charter means, what does that mean for life that you get? I don't understand quite yeah. what charter means because every new community that uh, decides to become a, a Lions Club, they uh, are involved with being a member of an international association of Lions Clubs. And what happens is a neighboring person is called a guiding lion. And he meets with the official of the new community, and at a given date, the the people who decide to become members on the initial charter, it's an official publication of list of members who are charter members, and you can only become a charter member once. After that, you become a general member. So it's, it's a charter that is in, is in the community with the official list of all the names, the date, and the officials of the local officials and the international president affixes his signature to the uh, charter, and 
and that's that's the definition of a charter. Well, we're talking about the Abington Lions Club, but not only just the Abington. How was the club founded by Melvin Jones? You, what started this whole club? Yes, well, Lions Club International uh, again is headquartered in Chicago, Illinois, but it was founded in 1917 by an individual. He was born in January 13, 1879 in Arizona, and he was the son of an army captain, and his name is Melvin Jones. Later on, they decided to move east, and the family's definition of east was Chicago, Illinois, and he became associated with an insurance company, and then in 1913, he formed his own agency. He soon joined a business club and was shortly elected secretary, and solely, it seemed like those businessmen had interest in their final interest only. Melvin Jones, then 38 years old, a Chicago business leader, he thought, what if these men, Melvin Jones asked, who are, who are successful because of their drive, their intelligence, and ambition were to put talents to work, improving their individual communities? Thus, at his invitation, delegates from different men's club met in Chicago to lay the groundwork for such an organization, and June 7th, 1917, Lions International was born. Melvin Jones eventually devoted himself to full-time Lion at Lions headquarters in Chicago. It was under his dynamic leadership that Lions Club earned a prestigious necessary to attract civic-minded civic members and other types of members. Later on, one of his greatest honors was in 1945 when he presented to Lions Club International as a consultant in the San Francisco, California, when they were going to Organization of United Nations. Melvin Jones, the man whose personal code you can't get very far until you start doing something for someone else in need. Melvin Jones did die at the age of 82, devoting his entire life to Lions Club International. There's a special uh, memorial. Uh, Melvin Jones Lions International Memorial was erected and dedicated in 1965. It was done in Fort Thomas, Arizona, where his, he initially started out. Uh, serving serving the needs of the less fortunate. I don't know if you would know the answer to this, but how did they come up with the name Lions Club? There, There is two uh, symbols. Uh, uh, a group of lions together is called a pride of lions, and the, uh, the two lions are on the official logo. I know one has to do with integrity, and I believe the other f is with compassion. What I visualize, if you look at the Chicago Museum in downtown Chicago, it has two lions that are protecting that building, similar to the museum in New York City, where there's also two lions facing just in a little different direction that are guarding the New York Museum in downtown Manhattan. So I think they're the original symbols of, of lionism. Awesome. Well, this is a perfect opportunity to take a quick little break. We now have a little bit of the history on the Lions Club. And, uh, and I love that, that description on, on the protection and the pride and all that. So thank you for that, Ed. Our guest today in the studio is Ed Bork, president of the Abington Lions Club. This is Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. I'm Tom Jenkins, along with your host, Terry Martin. And we will be back to talk more about the Lions Club. Confidence. It's something we all search for. It's something we all strive for. When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. I mean, think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get that confidence you need with Medary Clinicals. They are a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. From anti-aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Medary Clinicals gives you that confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Medary Clinicals. Check out MedaryClinicals.com. That's M-E-D-E-R-I Clinicals.com. Or call 866-646-3374. Take on the world with Medary Clinicals. 
Welcome back to Make a Change 94.3 FM The Talker. I'm Terry Martin, your host, and Tom Jenkins, my producer. Before the break, we were discussing with Ed Borick uh, with Alliance Club about a prominent person that got involved in the Lions, which was, I'll leave that up to you. Thank you, Terry. A national icon's powerful speech gave the new Lions Club its destiny. An already American legend for over 35 years, everybody knows this name, Helen Keller, gave an inspiring speech at a Lions Club International Convention. Over 3,000 Lions attended the local organization in Ohio, and Helen's first word at the convention, the Lions listened, was hush and awed, to Helen, according to the front page story the next day in the Sandusky Register. Lions Club International, only eight years old, but growing rapidly, largely increased its membership and flourished in 48 states and in Canada. Quite a few Lions Clubs help the blind, but many, many more should be helping the blind. Helen Keller's interest was service, not self-interest. Helen felt that the blind were left behind. America in 1920s had become an industrial country. Model T's rolled off the lines in Detroit. Telephones, refrigerators, vacuum cleaners become commonplace. It was the era of movies, sports legends, hero feats such as the first transatlantic flight, optimism and vision, prosperity filled the air. But Helen thought, again, more deeds should be done for the less fortunate. Education and self-enrichment is a major problem. Half a century of, of uh, the lions looking for a universal Braille code had finally found its acceptance in 1917, meaning it was the first time that the blind had the Braille to help them in learning education. And at that time, there was only 300 books in this format. It was about to change overnight. Braille books cost much more than 20 times the original book, and Helen wanted Lions Club to get more involved in that. Helen, Kel- Helen Kel- uh, Keller helped some myths about inherent capabilities of blind people, but most people still believe that those disabilities could contribute a little to si- society, Blind children were shunned into residential schools, which were often military-like and souls-deadening. Blind adults, if they worked at all, were confined to the traditional blind trades, broom-making, basket-weaving, and small handcrafts. By 1925, Helen was a uh, unique figure. She just as easily could have never been heard of. She was born in 1880 in a small rural Alabama town. Helen came down a mysterious illness not long before her second birthday. Her mother noticed that she had no longer responded to the dinner bell or when she waved a hand in front of her face. Young Helen was blind and deaf, trapped in a world of no light or sound. It's hard to appreciate today the public esteem in which Helen was held. She didn't cross the ocean like the Limburgs or swat mammoth home runs like Babe Ruth. She was famous not because of what she did or who she was. She was reversed not just for her ample intelligence but also for her her natural dignity and serenity. She had not more than triumphed over her own disabilities, but seemed to stretch the boundaries of human possibilities. People who met her walked away convinced that she touched greatness. Mark Twain, a friend and admirer, praised her as equal to fellows to Caesar, Alexander, Napoleon, Homer, Shakespeare, and the rest of the immorals. She will be famous a thousand years from now as she is today. Helen on the campaign trail, she always went to many, many cities to to raise funds for the blind people. The goal of Helen Keller's endowment, American Foundation of the Blind, was $2 million, a huge sum in those days. The foundation planned to use the money to prevent blindness among children and for related purposes. Helen and Anne, who was her teacher, 
took to the road for three years, eventually speaking to 250,000 people, 249 meetings in 123 cities coast to coast. Did she do all this through the Lions? Is that when she, or was that something separate before she got involved in the Lions? It was, yes, Terry, it was with the Lions and also on her own. So she Mm -hmm. was just in a period of transitioning to a full-time speaker for the Lions Club, but at the time she was uh, doing it for both organizations. It was at uh, Lions International Convention, their ninth convention in Cedar Point, Ohio, that Helen herself became the match that lit Lyons mission for the blind. One of her speeches, the hall was filled uh, by time Helen got on stage. Lyons expected a turnout of 4,000 at the convention. Instead, 7,500 Lyons came to hear Helen. Teacher um, spoke first, feeling, uh, telling the powerful stories about how Helen Keller learned to talk. Lyons showered her with applause. The first f- five members, then a five-member bland, band from Joplin, Missouri, played for several tunes. Helen and Teacher returned to the center stage. Despite the, the, her difficulty in speaking and never learned to speak clearly, her voice was tinny and robotic, almost unworthily. So was her custom that Sullivan Macy stood by Helen's side, ready to repeat each sentence to the audience. Helen braced herself. She knew that the audience was quiet like any other, and she pleaded financial support, but her unique opportunity to marshal the resources of the civic-minded. In less than 10 minutes, in in scant 500 words, she changed the course of Lyons' history and ultimately the personal histories of untold millions without vision or threatened by blindness. The opportunity, Helen stated, that I bring to you, Lions is, to foster and sponsor the words of American Foundation for the Blind. You will not help me to hasten the day when there shall be no preventable blindness, no little deaf, No blind children untaught, no blind man or woman unaided. I appeal to you, lions, who have your sight, your hearing, and you who are strong and brave and kind, will you not constitute, who have your sight, your hearing, you are strong and brave and kind, you will not constitute yourself knights of the blind in a crusade against darkness. I thank you. So that was the most important part of Helen Keller where she finally became involved with Lyons. The Lyons attending heard every word applauded widely. They touched the souls of of an organization. A lion named Ben Ruffin from West Virginia proposed that Helen be given an honorary Lyons membership. The motion was seconded by exactly a hundred people in the audience. Teacher was also accorded the same honor, and I'm happy and proud to be a lion, Helen told the crowd, and buzzing. The importance was to adopt site conservation and the work for the blind as a major service activity for Lions Club International. Helen became the champion of the blind Helen's speech galvanized Lyons, and Helen's plea intensified the efforts. Even the Hollywood Lions Club in California purchased a press for a Braille publishing house, meaning that now those costly Braille books would be common and made available to all the blind people. But now, what are we doing for the eye, the eyeglasses, maybe we could even get into. Yes, that's a very important question, Terry. Uh, presently, uh, because of Helen Keller, the Lions have ad- adopted uh, the need for collecting used eyeglasses, and uh, there's very collection points uh, throughout all communities that uh, have Lions. 
And what happens is at collection sites, at bank or a public library, different places, those blind, those glasses are collected. And I always vision maybe in a third or fourth world country, perhaps a carpenter with two, three children is unable to perform his duties as a carpenter in a rural community. And the lions come through with eyeglasses for him. Now he's able to continue and support his family by being a productive worker in that community. Because he can now see, because the lions take all these glasses and they send them somewhere to refurbish them? Is, yes. And figure out what the prescriptions are and so that you just don't give the glasses locally, which we do, but to third world countries third how do you do that yes the the uh the lions each lions club uh many lions clubs forms a district so each lions club uh collects eyeglasses and we have what we call a hearing and uh, eye uh, committee and this committee uh they have special meetings they have a president a treasurer a, a, a secretary and the glasses are turned into them and then what happens at district level they're turned into state level in harrisburg we have what we call uh the council of governors meet there and at the glasses are processed by um, eye specialist and uh what happens is they grade them for the prescription and uh, they are uh, polished and, and uh, you might say restored to a, a good vision and on each glasses have the prescription written on them and then they are forwarded uh, to international organizations such as UNICEF where they're distributed into third and fourth world countries and it's a tremendous asset. Other glasses that uh, say uh, are uh, unfit for use, they're the metal or sometimes there's uh, gold or silver plating on them and the uh, gold and silver plating is removed and it's turned back into the to the eye and research program program and use for a uh, uh, Lions program. And you do hearing aids also and cell phones at these collection points? Yes. Uh, just yesterday, I visited the Abington uh, Library on the Morgan Highway in Clark Summit, and I uh, collected perhaps uh, more than 25 pair of glasses, mm, uh, cell phones, and, and fortunately, a, a hearing aid and immediately I took that uh, uh, hearing aid because they're much in demand hearing aids today just to exam and the hearing aids themselves are very very costly and a lot of uh, low-income people or people on assistant living just cannot afford them so I took the hearing aid to a uh, a individual in Lake Manola, her name is Irene Masco. She's very dedicated to the hearing program and immediately she'll take this hearing aid and get it reconditioned. And at that board level, they have a list of needy people who must fill out an application who has a need for a hearing aid. And that hearing aid will be reconditioned and given to, and the needy person will be given an um, uh, an examination to to check on their hearing and if it's possible to be fitted up with that hearing aid right so if anyone's listening don't throw those old glasses mm. away and then also there's so many cell phones all over the place that we drop and break and go mm. get a new one so you want them even if they're broken yes uh, cell phones is an is another element that the lions collect uh there's different organizations uh, in, in the United States that will uh, reimburse Lions Clubs uh, for uh, old phones. Uh, it c could be as much as 50 cents to a few dollars to several dollars. But the older phones, the Lions also believe in protecting our environment. And older phones go to different manufacturers and they're broken down and on printed circuit boards and different contexts. There's copper and wiring. There's sometimes there's silver and gold. Yes, for one phone, it doesn't amount to much. But if you think thousands and thousands and ten thousands of phone, it's actually helping the environment then the phones that are that can be restored they have different programs for for example for the women who are less fortunate
unfortunate for a battered woman. Uh, these like victims f- resource, you mean? That yes, type? yes. These phones are given to them so they could have the safety, uh, uh, perhaps to call 991 or the local police for protection of their own. Well, it's a perfect spot to take a quick break, Ed. Okay. You are listening to Make a Change with your host, Terry Martin. I'm Tom Jenkins, and our special guest today is Ed Borick, the president of the Abington Lions Club. If anybody needed more information on the Lions, Ed, how would they get that information? Do you know? Yes, that's uh, for the w- ones in the Abington. We have Abington Lions, Post Office Box 273, Clark Summit, PA 18411. You can um, write a note to that, and it would be uh, it would be on the agenda at a board of directors meetings with I chair. Or if you have interest, uh, you could personally contact any Lion member or uh, a phone call. If you like more information about Lions, uh, it doesn't just have to be for the Abington area, the Clark Summit area. My phone number is 570-587-2925. But I have a district directory with every Lions club listed in Lackawanna, Wyoming, Susquehanna, and Wayne County. I'd be more than pleased to connect you with the president or a secretary of, of one of those clubs if you wish to learn more about local Lionism. Wonderful. Thanks, Ed. And we will be right back with more on The Lions Club on 94.3 FM, The Talker. Confidence. It's something we all search for. It's something we all strive for. When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. I mean, think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, You feel good on the inside. Get that confidence you need with Medary Clinicals. They are a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. From anti-aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Medary Clinicals gives you that confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Medary Clinicals. Check out MedariClinicals.com. That's M-E-D-E-R-I Clinicals.com. Or call 866-646-3374. Take on the world with Medary Clinicals. Welcome back to Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. I'm Terry Martin, your host, and Tom Jenkins, my producer. Well, before the break, we were discussing everything that the Lions have to offer and Ed, I understand that you have the Lions have a program for uh, would it be high school uh, students, and it, it's called Leos. Yes, uh, thank you, Terry. Terry has a keen interest in the youth of the communities, and it's very, very unique. Lions International has a program for Leos. A Leo is. A young lady, a young man in 10th, 11th, 12th grade, uh, also college freshmen and sophomores and juniors. And if you could just imagine this, Leo's clubs were founded here in Pennsylvania. Leo started with an individual named Jim Grave in 1957, a member of Pennsylvania District 14R, Glenside Lions Club. The state of Pennsylvania is subdivided into 17 different districts, and a district in- includes lions of perhaps one uh, large uh, county or up to three or four or five smaller counties. So in 14R, he was a basketball coach in the Abington High School in Montgomery County, Abington Township, different than the Abingtons in Clark Summit. With help from fellow Lions, he f- formed the first Leo, was chartered on December 5th, 1957. And this is incredible because as the world's first Leo's club, the Abington High School Leo's Club created Leo's, and they have a motto of leadership, equality, and opportunity as they uh, choose their school colors, maroon and gold, as their Leo Club colors. In October 67, the Board of Directors of Lions Club International adopted the Leo Club program as official a program of Lions Association of Lions Club. So now it becomes a worldwide that was born right here in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. 
Well, that's interesting. I didn't know that. What do uh, when they get the kids involved? What do what do the kids? Uh, what kind of responsibilities do they take on? Well, each Leo club has an advisor who is a lion from District 14H, and each each uh, new Leo club uh, custom tailors their program. They have a president, a secretary, a treasurer, and each community has different needs. There's so many examples. For example, uh, a local Lions club, I'll just mention the ones in our area, and we should be very, very proud of these young people. The Blue Ridge Leo's Club, Old Forge Leo Club, Oliphant Leo Club, Valley View Leo Club. We need one in the Abingtons, right? Yes, we should be Anyone working on that. One. We need that. We'll make you the advisor and guiding oh, no. lion. <laughs> <laughs> okay. No, no, yes, no. if you don't have enough to do, Terry. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, anyhow, these clubs, uh, they each year we have a, a, a district convention and we have the Leos attend our district convention for multiple purposes. They give a report to the business meeting of, of their activities and also we have them attend our gala banquet and we use them as escorts of the distinguished dignitaries who are visiting us from international or different parts of the states and they get a big thrill out of escorting them to the head table, these dignitaries. But at the business meeting, the reports, I must be truthful, some of them are more meaningful and beneficial or equal as a club who's been in existence for 10 or 15 or 20 years. They have blood drives. They support assisted living centers where they go there. They have uh, food baskets for the needy drive. They have uh, programs uh, where they collect donations at a, at a football game. And it could be a hoagie cell. It could be a pancake breakfast in a local school cafeteria. Th- these individuals are just awesome and awesome awesome and every member who lives in northeastern pennsylvania should be a proud of these individuals we have unbelievable talents and without a doubt they are going to be the official leaders of district 14h and we hope to see them come to the to the lions club and perhaps be leaders as presidents and secretaries and treasurers and chairmen of different organizations so each leo out there needs to be congratulated for exceptional service to the cause of lion I'm sure Helen Keller and Melvin Jones would be very, very proud to learn that the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania is the first place that Leos were were chartered. I had no idea. I always thought throughout my life that the Lions Club just helped with the blind. That's all I ever thought. I had no idea, Ed, that you guys did so much more. And these kids, these Leos, sound mm. fantastic and phenomenal with all of the community stuff that they, they take care of. So that is that is amazing. That's awesome. And just in a uh, short period of time, at present, there's over 150,000 young Leos in, in 139 countries proud to volunteer service in their local communities, and they call themselves Leos. These young community Leos are active and dedicated to creating new and existing youth volunteer opportunities by participating in their local Leo club. Again, it's an incredible experience to meet these folks. That is incredible. This is Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. We're listening to Ed Borick, the president of the Abington Lions Club, and he is chock full of knowledge. And I want to kind of switch gears here a little bit, Ed. Uh, We were talking during the one break about, you know, nonprofit organizations and and volunteer organizations. Um, And and Terry had mentioned, you know, a lot of non-members get like a bad taste in their mouth. They get this terrible feeling. Well, I want to donate money and I want to help, but I want to make darn sure my money's going to help. Mm -hmm. And, And a lot of them are cynical about where the money's going. You know, can you break down where where not just money, but but everything that, that is donated to you guys. Can you break it down and, and, and give us directions on where this where everything goes? That, that's a wonderful uh, question and support of Lions Club locally and international Lions. I have full awareness of the following. And this has not been a study by the Lions Club, but it's been done by financial institutes institutions. And they print 
the fact that Lions Club International and local Lions Club donations given to those organizations are the very, very best in our nation to give to. And the reason is that at Lions Club International, we are governed by a president, a first vice president, second vice president, uh, treasurer, and international board of directors. And it is the law and the policies of international that every penny we make, naturally as you travel around the world, it could be a ruble, a franc, a lira, but every every type of financial money you make, it's mandatory that it's given back to the needs of the community and we're proud as Lions where we give 100% of our project money back to various programs in Lionism. That is wonderful to hear. Thank you so much for clearing that up for yes. us. At at International, uh, sometimes some folks uh, have a myth that they don't want to be involved with somebody out of the community. I, I could just say this is, yes, we do have what we call an international per capita. We have a state per capita and a district per capita. And I always look at it as a large pie chart where if you take it international, it's, it's just unbelievable what the Lions International does for the world. Uh, some examples locally, just a few years ago, we had a major flood of the Susquehanna River from the New York line, Halstead, Great Bend, all the way down to the Luzerne, Lackawanna County. Well, our district officials simply on a fax chartered, uh, excuse me, faxed a, a uh, grant request to Lions International. And in a moment of less than 24 hours, we received $10,000 cash from Lions International to support flood victims around, along the Susquehanna River. And then I'm sure everybody listening has full awareness of the recent, what, two years ago now, Sandy, the major disaster in New York and New Jersey. Well, it, what happened there is Lions International came into this area with mobile hospitals, water purifying station, and monies that were allocated to different reliefs. And the Lions of Northeastern Pennsylvania, District 14H, we went out to our individual clubs to ask support of them. And, for example, a club would send in financial support or material items, and it was collected in a holding area here in the greater Scranton area. And on a given uh, weekend, we took seven truckloads of cleaning supplies and support items for these flood victims down to what we call district governor or high-level officials in, in New Jersey and was distributed to them. Some of our members actually took a week off of work or uh, a weekend and they traveled to New Jersey to assist in relief efforts. And at one of our district conventions, we had a report to all attendees at the convention of all the wonderful deeds of service we did and how appreciative these uh, flood victims were. And it goes much further than that. I'm sure many of us could remember just a few years Katrina down in Louisiana. We could remember Haiti. Well, uh, some of those programs uh, uh, where Lions International re receive requests for grants, it, it, it totals up into millions of dollars, and Haiti forever and ever needed support. In Japan, we had the uh, major disaster where the uh, tsunamis just went into inland for over a mile. A new nuclear plant was uh, shut down, and Lions in uh, 209 countries, 1.4 million members of Lions International uh, joined together and supported the, the Japanese needs, and it totaled over $6 million to support for that. So if our organization did that and other international organizations or other group or foundations, it's just incredible Lions working together to support other members in a remote area of our, of our uh, world. So it's local, it's international, and it's global, and it's just wonderful to hear the success stories that international does. Ed, you know, I, I really like what you said in the way you explained it about the money staying. Many people wanted to stay right in our area. 
And sometimes we do get upset when we say, look what all we need. And yet we're giving it to the other areas. But as you just explained, you never know when it's going to be your area where we need the money. And then they all come in and give us money. So that's good. That was a really good explanation. Yes, it can happen right in your backyard. You hope it doesn't. It's uh, it's it's just wonderful uh, what the lionism does at the international level. And our motto is we serve, and we're very very proud of that. And uh, it's it's uh, it's incredible. Uh, a, a few things about Lions International. Just try and visualize this: that there are. 45,000 clubs worldwide. And as president of the Dabington Lions, I'm one over 45,000. And I visualize this. I heard on uh, the TV uh, just a few days ago where the Baltimore Orioles had a baseball game with 45,000 people uh, attending. I just thought it would take that entire stadium to fit in all the presidents of the Lions International. And then if you take the secretaries, you need another stadium that large and the treasurer another large. And then where do you fit 1.4 million people doing deeds of service in, uh, for the world? It, one good thing about Lions International uh, we could touch on is that just uh, three years ago, the International Convention was held in Pusan, Korea. Can you imagine 55,000 people from 209 countries attending the International Convention? Last year, it was in Hamburg, Germany. This past year, just a drive away in Toronto, Canada. And what is nice, next year it will be in Honolulu, Hawaii. Mm -hmm. And we talked about Lionism being formed in 1917. Well, right now at the international level, what we're planning on is for the 100th year celebration. And it's going to be held in the birthplace of Lions in Chicago, Illinois, on June 7th, 2017. So we're in the planning stages. Many clubs uh, have many... um, have many responsibilities and and some of the centennial challenges will be where we're trying to have 25 people benefit just in the youth arena we're trying to have 25 million people in vision which includes vision screening low vision age braille education mobility and sight restoration and surgery such cataracts in eye banking where corneas are actually uh, when a person say there's a major accident on a highway and that person donates their eyes their eyes can be uh, sent quickly to for example will's eye hospital in philadelphia and uh, transplant it into a person who is blind and also the environment lions want 25 people um, to protect our environment includes a uh, Uh, recycling which lines is big in it uh, includes solar energy parks and playgrounds for community and even planting trees uh, in our in our local communities and also the international family wants 25 million people benefit from hunger and we all know what that is uh, very key services food pantries soup kitchens feeding programs meals meal delivery and even improvement in, in agriculture in little gardens. So the international family is working very, very religiously now to support a major program for the next several years to bring Lionism even further in the forefront of uh, uh, by t- by uh, 2017. Lions, uh, our Lions International President has a unique program where Lions approved where the United States treasurer is going to mint a Lions Club International silver coin, which would be available to Lions and collectors, and it'll be a keepsake for Lions forever and ever, one pure ounce of silver. Right now, we do have to take a quick break, Ed, but before our time is up, there's one really important topic, and that is the Beacon Lodge. Can we talk about that when we come back? Certainly. Okay. 
If uh, you need more information on the Lions Club, you can check out lionsclubs.org, lionsclubs.org, or uh, just keep listening because at the right at the end of the show, we'll have Ed give some more phone numbers out and uh, <laughs> and some more addresses and, and, and whatnot. This is Make a Change on 94.3 FM The Talker, and we'll be right back. Confidence. It's something we all search for. It's something we all strive for. When we're confident, we feel we can accomplish anything. And think about it. When you knew you looked good, you walked with your head held a little higher. Looking people in the eye was easy. You felt like you could tackle the world. The first step in finding that confidence is obviously how you look. And when you look good on the outside, you feel good on the inside. Get that confidence you need with Madari Clinicals. They are a unique skincare company that specializes in complete skincare for women and men. From anti-aging to glycolic and even a special clinical line for sensitive skin, Madari Clinicals gives you that confidence. Make that change. Look brand new. Feel brand new with Madari Clinicals. Check out MadariClinicals.com. That's M-E-D-E-R-I Clinicals.com or call 866-646-3374. Take on the world with Madari Clinicals. Welcome back to Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. We're with our special guest today, Ed Bork, the president of the Abington Lions Club. And uh, I don't think Ed's just from the Abingtons. I mean, Ed is all over the place with the Lions Club. If you need more information, you can check out lionsclubs.org. Or what's your phone number, Ed? 570-587-2925. Awesome. Now, during the break, you had said one word, and I stopped you because I want you to talk about it now. Leader dogs. What is a leader dog? Yeah. Leader dog, their headquarters are in Rochester, Michigan, and it allows blind people from all over the uh, United States to come to leader dog for the purpose of getting special training to uh, adopt to a, a leader dog. They have uh, mock cities where the people learn to uh, uh, cross streets and go up elevators, and it's totally funded by lions of all the United States. And uh, I'm sure many people saw uh, guide dogs helping a blind person in, in, in our local area. And, and it's all funded by the Lions Club, you said? All funded by lions, yes. Now, right before the break, Terry had mentioned the Beacon Lodge. Lodge. You've got to tell us a little bit about Beacon Lodge. <laughs> Ed, you have to see, I mean, it's radio. Ed, Ed's got his head down. He's, Ed is a very humble man, and he doesn't like to talk that much about himself. So we're kind of putting him on the spot now. But uh, what about the Beacon Lodge, Ed? Well, Beacon Lodge is in central uh, Pennsylvania. It's alongside the Juniana River. And it's, uh, again, it's funded by all lines of Pennsylvania. At one time, the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania gave funds, but not any longer because of the changes. And it's truly a special program. Uh, they have a village there. It's called the Children's Village from 6 to 17, Adult Village from 18 to uh, the Golden Years. And it's each blind person has the opportunity to go in there for a 10-day uh, session. It's called a camp, but I call it an educational opportunity. And blind people from all uh, across the Commonwealth can attend there. And it's just unbelievable. They have opportunities to go get in a canoe and go for a canoe ride. They could go uh, on a braille trail and put their fingers across the maple leaf or an oak leaf. They learn to shoot uh, a 22. They learn to go swimming. They learn archery. They, they learn uh, companionship with other people. And in each, each age group, they have counselors who are well, well trained. And again, they have a, uh, a, one area is for the children's uh, camping and one is for the adult. And again, with these, with the uh, adults, it's unbelievable. Some of these are uh, piano players, uh, a professional like opera singer, uh, a comedy person, country western singer. As an individual, I had a special group of these people come to the old, old Rocky Glen, and they put an afternoon performance on all by blind folks. It was just an incredible, incredible experience here in Pennsylvania. At Beacon Lodge, I had the opportunity at a convention in the Poconos of an individual who got up and said he nominated Ed Borick to Beacon Lodge coordinator. 
I immediately denied that, telling them (laughs) I was in a worldwide travel situation and I I, I could not do it. And he said, Ed Borak will get more done when he's away. So I ended up becoming a Beacon Lodge coordinator for two years. And under new business, we found out we had to build a new dormitory at Beacon Lodge. It became to be known as 14H, Hilton on a Hillside at Beacon Lodge. Incredible experience where we actually uh, went around to clubs. They donated money. They donated building supplies. They actually came to Beacon Lodge for 14 consecutive weekends in a row. And we actually built this uh, dormitory, a 16-bed dormitory for the blind. And it's an incredible asset. Been serving Beacon Lodge for many, many years. And I'm proud of that. I received a plaque, and the plaque reads that to the individual who completed the largest project ever undertaken— by District 14 age. So there's deeds of service for everybody out there if they wish to get involved. And it's an incredible experience being involved with Beacon Lodge. How can people get involved with Beacon Lodge or with the Lions Club in general? If you have a keen interest in serving the needs of others, uh, simply, you know, give me a call. If you know a n- n- member who's a lion, uh, you, you could uh, speak with them. I have a directory of every Lions Club in, in our district, and I'm more than happy to furnish that information to you folks. How would people get a hold of you, Ed? You could call me at area code 570-587-2925. And you can also check out lionsclubs.org. That's lionsclubs, plural, dot O-R-G. And I just have to, I, I have to throw in my, my two cents here, Ed. Out of all the years that I've been in radio and, and doing news stories and, and, and public interest and all of that stuff, the Lions Club is hardly ever heard about. And, and I again, right. I had absolutely no idea that you guys did so much more than just helping with the blind. Is that because of humility or you just it doesn't matter that you're in a spotlight. You just want to go get the job done, help other people. And it doesn't matter if you're in the limelight or not. Yeah, how true. It's incredible. Many of our leaders quite frequently say that Lions Clubs are the best kept secret in the community. And it's unbelievable. Just with the Abington, we do scholarships for the Abington School District. We sponsor two Little League teams. Just two years ago, the Little Leagues, their hot dog machine was down $750 for a new um, uh, hot dog machine. Uh, it, it uh, a lady right now in the Abington is very low income. She needs a hearing aid and a hearing exam. That's thousands of dollars for that. We're in a process of, of finalizing that. Uh, example, right at the foot of the Summit Hill, there's a lady named Judy Smigel. She's officially blind. And uh, I was in her residence, her and I had several meetings, and she t- told me this about Beacon Lodge. We sent her there for one session for 10 days for $550. She said, Mr. Boric, you think I could go for two sessions? And Julie told me these following words. She said, Mr. Boric, Beacon Lodge is a paradise for me to attend. Uh, can I go for two sessions? I love that place. And what she loved, the third Sunday of every year in July, we have a a Lion's Day appreciation at Beacon Lodge, and she wanted to be a part of that program. And the list goes on and on. We help the Abington area hillside recreation complex. We uh, clear brush. We uh, have fundraisers there, concession stands, and uh, we do coffee stops at I-81 north and southbound where you get to meet literally people traveling from Canada. There's a wide variety of uh, different nationalities, and it's an experience of a lifetime um, to be a lion. Our special guest today has been Ed Borick president of the Abington Lions Club. If you'd like more information, check out lionsclubs.org. Personally, Ed, I'd like to say thank you for everything you and the Lions do for our community and for the international community. And so, so thank do you. I, Ed, <laughs> because I am a lion because of Ed. If you get near him, it's just contagious of his energies and you want to be a part of it. And yet you never really 
get on me all the time and say, you have to do this, you have to do that. It's whatever you can do, Terry. And if he offers you pasta, be warned. <laughs> anything, yeah. he, anything he gets you involved in is fun. Yeah, well, we, 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 we need to congratulate uh, Lion Terry, too, because she helped spo- uh, uh, support and sponsor. Uh, I got the credit for sponsoring, but uh, seven new members were inducted into the Edmonton Lions. And Terry was uh, an incredible support. She helped with at least three or four of them, and we call them the Magnificent Seven. <laughs> Thank you, Ed. Well, this is Make a Change on 94.3 FM, The Talker. Thank you again, Ed, for being on the show today and for everything you do. I am Tom Jenkins, along with your host, Terry Martin, and I uh, hope you have a great week. We'll talk to you next week on 94.3 FM, The Talker.